Welcome to part two of the joint lecture and we're going to start out with the synovial joints. So if you look at this picture here, when we first think of these joints that have so much movement, we think of the shoulder, correct? And maybe we think of the hip, but actually in the knee also, but there's many more places uh, in your hand and your wrist that, that has some of this movement. So um, let's continue on here. Uh, this is the, this is a funny thing. Why do your knuckles pop? And I put a video in the video section, external videos for you to be able to, to see that because uh, it's kind of a funny thing and that has everything to do with joints. Okay, so we want to look at the anatomy of, a, of one of these synovial joints and we could take as an example the finger. Okay, and on there uh, we're going to see the different parts. So let's start with a picture and then I'll enumerate them for you. So in a picture you would have proximal phalanx and middle phalanx. Okay, so you have proximal and middle and you would have the joining of these two bones. Well, what would you see in that region? Well, the first thing that you'd have is an articular cartilage, right? Each one here in sort of blue would have its own set of cartilages and that's going to be a really nice cushioning mechanism for those two bones coming in contact. Okay, now after that we want to look at what's in this little cavity between these two bones. So there is what we call a, a joint capsule. Okay, we're going to go here joint capsule and that has two parts to it it has this inner membrane that it's sort of shown here in the reddish color it's called a synovial membrane and it has fluid inside so here you have the cushioning right of the cartilage and then on top of that you have fluid in there and um, that's going to have to be enclosed right so that's going to be inside the synovial membrane. And then on top of that, there's a capsule on the outside. So there's going to be this fibrous capsule that kind of closes up the whole thing. So inside synovial membrane, outside fibrous capsule, and together those are going to make the joint capsule, making it having a lot of movement. So here we're going to um, enumerate them now so that you see them in writing. An articular cartilage. It has hyaline cartilage at both ends and it's going to reduce friction, it's going to absorb shock, it's going to be good for the coming together of those two bones. <clears throat> that um, cartilage is interesting because I'm saying that it behaves, sorry, it behaves like a sponge uh, because with compression, so in the finger it's harder to imagine, but if you think of it in your legs, you've gone out running and you've gone for a long run and you're, you're, the femur is hitting here on the tibia, right? And both of those have an articular cartilage. And the pounding is going to actually squeeze that cartilage and it's actually going to release some fluid. So the fluid is going to come out into that joint capsule. And then the next day you're tired, you're not going to run, you're going to give it a break for one day and that fluid sort of uh, will get absorbed back again by the cartilage. So the cartilage does, it's, it's very dynamic. It's going to sort of get squeezed out during compression and then it's going to fill back out, fill back up again. Now, <clears throat> the articular capsule then has the outer layer, which is the fibrous capsule, and that is thick dense connective tissue which is a very thick hard to cut through material and it's going to enjoy it's going to enclose that whole cavity <clears throat> and the inner lining then is going to be the synovial membrane so the synovial membrane sort of is the inner balloon that has the fluid and then an outer thicker sort of leathery coating that's going to hold all of that in place synovial um, <clears throat> fluid is what's going to be inside that is sort of very transparent see-through fluid mostly water and uh, it's these special fibroblasts that are that produce the synovial fluid so they're always secreting more of this fluid and what's that do it's going to lubricate 
it's also going to provide nourishment for those chondrocytes of the articular cartilage. So the chondrocytes are the cells of the cartilage, and it provides nourishment for those cells to keep them healthy. And it's a shock absorber. Uh, anytime you have a fluid um, helping to disseminate sort of shock or the pounding of the two bones, um, those compressive forces are distributed more evenly if you have fluid in that joint. So it's going to help you to have that there. And back to the picture again. So you now you can envision how all well, that fluid is in there. This is going to get compressed, release even more fluid into the joint capsule. But that, you know, the drew the, the outer capsule is the fibrous one in white, and the pinkish one is the synovial membrane. Now, some synovial joints <clears throat> are very sophisticated and they have <clears throat> more structures there. And one of them are, uh, is articular discs. So these are fibrocartilage pads that divide the synovial cavity. So it's as if you had this sort of swimming pool in there and it was yet divided in the middle. So you had swimming pool one and swimming pool two. So the meniscus, the menisci, the plural, yeah, in the knee, do this. And uh, also in the jawbone. And I think I'll, I'll show you pictures of that a little, little later. Some of these structures also have fat pads. It's just going to give more cushioning. You have little locations, little tiny balloons of fat that are going to help that joint. This is the temporomandibular joint. And so look. Um, so we have, this is the, the condyle from the mandible. So they cut this off, but this would continue on and be part of the mandible that's inside your jaw, right? In the bone here. And instead of having one joint cavity in blue here of cartilage on the outside that comes all the way around, it has a second one in the middle dividing this area here and further cushioning that joint. The temporomandibular joint, that TMJ joint, is very complicated. Open and close your mouth, see what it has to do. And now it chews sideways. It has to go sideways, it has to go up and down. It's a very complicated joint to build. Um, so that one does give people some problems. Okay, what about the knee? So the knee has <clears throat> that separation, right, through menisci that are going to separate that fluid above and below. <coughs> Excuse me. And they have these fat pads also in blue is a fat pad. So fat pads are going to be able to cushion the knee here too, surrounding the patella. Um, <clears throat> these are just uh, terms that I've listed for you that should be floating around in your brain by now. And they're doing exactly that. They're just floating around in your brain without really knowing who's who anymore. So I would suggest taking these terms and either building a concept map or uh, giving them definitions. And in that way, it's going to help you remember what's what, who's a synchondrosis, who's a gomphosis, and all that. Um, <clears throat> we want to look at the knee. And uh, I'm going to start by showing you the posterior view. So in your book, you have lots of different uh, synovial joints that are explained in a lot of detail, and I'm only looking at one, at the knee. So if you look at the knee, uh, this is in posterior. Notice that's really important. So we're looking at the tibia and the fibula posteriorly, and the condyles, medial and lateral condyle. And... Um, meniscus here so it's an extra cartilage there that's going to cushion not all meniscus and then inside here are the cruciate ligaments that cruciate meaning crossing it's like an x so <clears throat> that x here in this picture you can only see the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior is here okay so it's it's called posterior because it attaches on the tibia posteriorly okay on the tibia 
in posterior view. It's going to look here, and then when we see the other one, you're going to see the anterior cruciate attaching onto the anterior part of the tibia. <clears throat> so the ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, I'm describing it here in words so that you can go back and look at it. It attaches to the tibia anteriorly. It prevents hyperextension of the knee. It's going to hold it tight there. And when the knee is extended, it's pulled tight and can't go any further. The posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, <clears throat> attaches to the tibia posteriorly and it's going to prevent the femur from slipping off the front of the tibia. So it's taut there so that there's no sliding that's happening between those two bones. Okay, let's move on. Um, this is the posterior cruciate ligament tear where you'd see that the femur here is sort of pushing over in that direction. I've got a phone ringing. <clears throat> and uh, this is a tear where it's just coming, coming off. That sounds painful. Uh, lots of uh, injuries of the anterior cruciate ligament have to do with twist. So this is really common in sports where you plant your foot, it's steady in one position, and then you decide that you want to go the other way. So you want to just, you want to rotate and your foot is in one position and you want to rotate and it just rotates in that location around the knee. Not great. Um, I'm debating whether to go. I'm going to skip through the clicker. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the knee in anterior view. So you're looking now at the anterior cruciate ligament that's attaching onto the tibia, the meniscus, lateral and medial meniscus, and then the posterior cruciate is in there. So see, notice how it's definitely an X here. Those two look Okay, we have another set of ligaments, the collateral ligaments, that also called fibular, um, which are fibular collateral. So they're they're attaching onto the fibula. Okay, so fibular collateral ligament ligament is coming down to the fibula, like this, and the tibial collateral ligament. So it's it's going to come down onto the tibia. the two I wanted to show you. Medial tibial um, is the medial collateral ligament. I think it's on this picture. No. Okay, let's move on then. These are just more pictures showing you. Articular cartilage, the meniscus here, and the patella is going to be further out. Okay, I'm gonna skip. Um, okay, the I'm gonna skip those skip those clickers. So, in the um, synovial joint structure, you could also have bursi or bursa for singular, and these are interesting. They're just little other little balloons, but this is filled with fluid that's not fat. It's filled with synovial fluid, and these are very important where there may be friction of a tendon that's kind of rubbing on that joint, okay? So you've probably heard of, you know, bursitis, and what happens there is that you have the inflammation of the bursa, and it's usually an overuse injury. So when uh, on a joint, it's getting a lot of usage over and over again, and you have this tendon rubbing on these bursa that are trying to cushion it, um, that they could become inflamed, and that is very painful. So, tennis elbow in you know in the elbow is the inflammation of the bursa. I mean, people describe it as being so painful they can't brush their teeth. You can't put their arm up just to brush their teeth, which is no weight at all. Not 
carrying any weight. It's just the movement is painful. <clears throat> this to me is very amazing in that as recently as 2013, a new ligament was discovered you know, after all those knee surgeries uh, that MDs make or do to think that there would be another ligament that they've never noticed before and it goes from the femur to the tibia and it's the anterolateral ligament it's a tiny little guy and that's why i guess it wasn't fully noticed before let's do this one so uh structure number three so structure number three is this here You have to be careful to see what, um, whether you're looking at this anteriorly or posteriorly. And what's going to help you is maybe the presence of the fibula. So given the presence of the fibula, we would know that this is the lateral meniscus. This is another example of retrocalcaneal uh, bursitis. So we have bursa here that are, um, right, they're going to, this tendon is coming onto the calcaneus. And so we have bursa here that are trying to cushion that rubbing of that tendon on the bone. So this is another place that can be painful in overuse injury. This is trying to show you Versa should be a little, little balloon like this with fluid and how big it can get. It can get inflamed to the point that um, it actually bleeds and then it has to be drained. So that's quite painful. We also have Versa in the hand. We have lots of these little pockets, little balloons I call them, and they're going to help this array of tendons that you have coming to your fingers. There's a lot going on in your hand. And so bursa are common in the hand. Uh, I posted for you an ACL surgery that's kind of fun to look at on your external video page. Um, there's no blood, it's just uh, diagrams, but it's very interesting to look at. Okay, we're going to stop right there and then go on to the movement that these joints have or don't have. Thanks for listening.